Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to look at a control in C Sharp Windows Forms in Visual Studio, and that's called a combo box. And here is an example application that we're going to use to show you how the combo box works. And what this application does is it goes out, as, as I started up, it, it goes out and checks all of the available USB serial COM ports on my computer, and it lists them in this text box. And over here on the left, I've got a combo box. And basically, it looks like it's a drop-down list that you can select from. We've gone out and found that there are these four available COM ports. And we've also populated this combo box with the available COM ports. And the user can then select which COM port. All right, so that's basically what a combo box is. However, we've also added this text that appears in the combo box, and it says select the COM port. So you not only have a drop down, but you also have a text part of it that you can access and change as you need. So for example, you could default it to a certain COM port in this case, and then when the user selects it, it will change it. But the way it is now, it says select COM port, and I can select, well, COM6. And I've wired it up to my application so that it also, once I select from this combo box, it prints out what the selection was in this text box. So let's give some thought about how this is going to work. Well, first of all, we know that with the combo box, you're going to have to populate it with these choices. So when we started this up, we found all the available COM ports. Somehow you're going to have to populate the combo box with those choices so the user can select. So we're going to have to initially populate it. We've also populated this text box part of it with the select the COM port text. So now if I go through and I select a COM port, you can see that it updates that in the text box. So what does that mean? How is that going to work? Well, there's probably going to be an event, right? When you select from the combo box, you're probably going to initiate an event, and there's going to be an event handler that responds to that change in selection and then prints out what that selection is. And it's probably going to print out what's in this text box. So you can start to see we're going to have a text box, and we're going to have a drop down with selections. And when the user selects an item, there's going to be an event and an event handler that will respond to that change. And you can grab what is the new selection because that's what's going to be in the text box part. And that's what we did here. We said, OK, we got an event that we changed the selection. So now we're going to grab what's in the text box with that new selection and it's COM6 and print it out here. So now you can start to see the functionality in this text box. We're going to be populating. We're going to have an event. We're going to have a text box portion of it. So let's take a look at the code and see how we can implement this. So here is our very simple C Sharp Windows Forms Visual Studio application. You can see it's got my default form. And I've dragged and dropped a combo box in the toolbox down to combo box. And I drag and drop that. I changed the font size, but uh, you don't need to do that. And then I've also drag and dropped a text box, text box one, and then an exit button. So very simple. Um, so let's t look at the code behind this and see what's going on. So um, I've got my using statement system collections.generic. Now we're going to be using lists for this, in this case, list of strings that has the list of the available COM port. So that's why we got system collections.generic. System.io ports, of course, because we're going to look at the COM ports. System.language integrated query, we're going to do some link stuff. And then systemwindows.forms. The first thing I do is I define a list of string, which is the list of the COM ports. COM4, COM7, COM5, whatever. So that's a new list of string. And then I've got my form one that we'll look at. And I've got a method we talked about in another video where we show how to go out and search for all the available USB serial COM ports. And we discussed that here. But basically, it just when you call it, it comes back with a list of string, which is going to be this COM list, which is the list of available COM ports. All right. So we're not going to go through that. Look in the other video for that. 
and then we have a button one click which is the exit button now in the for and we've also got an event handler which we're going to talk about in a bit and this is associated with the combo bar so we've got the combo box and here's the only code we need for initializing our form. We've got the standard initialized component. As we fed, said before, we're going to get a list of all the com ports and we're going to assign it to com list, the list of string, and it just goes and gets the ports. So now we've got the list of com ports available. And what I can do is I can add some text to our combo box, initial text that says select COM port. So we run it and here is that text. It initializes with select COM port. So combo box one dot text equals select COM port. That will put select COM port in the text box. And then we're going to do text box one append text available COM ports, which is this, and then we're going to list. So we're going to go through that list of COM ports and just print them into the text box. So for each string com in com list, the list of com ports, combo box one dot items dot add com text box one dot append text com. So in the same way that you add the strings to your text box by doing an append text, you add the available items to your combo box by saying combo box dot items dot add and it will add that string. So it, we add each string uh, to show the available COM ports and that populates that combo box. So now we're at the point where we have all of this. We've got the combo box set up. We've listed all the available COM ports and now we're just waiting for the user to select one of those entries in the combo box. And that's where this event handler comes from. So it's the combo box one selected index changed. So what that means is it, you have changed the selected item and those items are each indexed. So that's index zero, one, two, three. You have changed the index of the selected item to now say COM6. That initiates an event selected index changed. Now the way we get that event handler is we go here, we select the combo box, and we go to this on the far right in the properties, this lightning bolt, and I've gone to selected index changed event, double clicked on that, and it gives us this event handler. So now all we have to do is when we get that event handler, it says somebody selected a different item in the list, we're just appending to our text box, to this text box here, we're appending combo box one dot text, which is, we select say COM7, now combo box one dot text says COM7, and then we're, we're grabbing that and printing it out in this text box. So that's the simplest use of a combo box as a dropdown, right? You just wait on an event where somebody has selected an item, and then do whatever you want to do with it. Now you can also have events associated with changing the text in the text box part of this. So let's take a look at that now. So let's go into our form one and select the combo box. And as we had before, click on this lightning bolt in the properties and you can see all of the many, many events that are associated with this combo box. And we'll scroll down, you can see the index change that we've already uh, utilized. And there's another one that we can utilize, which is called text changed. So if we hover here and double click, we will get a text changed event handler. And here is the text change event handler. And all I'm gonna do is I am going to do the same line of code that I've got with the selected index change and just modify it a little bit. And what's this, what this is going to do is anytime I change the text, I type in that text box, it's going to repeat the contents of that combo box into our text box. So let's run this and see what happens. So here is our text box and our combo box that I'm going to click on that and type goober. And you can see each time I type the character, 
it was immediately reflected with that event into the text box. So that's yet one other use. There are many other ways you can use this, but this is to just give you an idea that you can go through and look at the events and figure out what you needed to do. For example, you could wait until you've typed the entire word and then hit a uh, carriage return and then you will get the entire word. But this is just some, one example of some of the things you can do with a uh, combo box. So if you like any of these videos, please hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.